I know what you're thinking. What's the deal with color of money and why is everybody talking about it? Well, stick around and we're going to talk about that. But first, good evening, Agile Acquisition Enthusiasts. Welcome back to the Underground Digital Tiki Bar. It's Friday night, and that means it's time for another episode of Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol. So cheers. Welcome back. We are going to kick off a three-part series talking about color of money. Not just color of money, but appropriations. What does it mean? Why is it important? On this three-part series, we're going to talk about the different types of color of money. Then we're going to talk in the next set episode, what are some of the challenges or processes involved in organizations obtaining different colors of money and what are things they have to consider? And then finally, what are the innovations that are happening around color of money, especially in the Department of Defense? So let's kick it off with this first episode. And we're just going to start with a very basic fundamental understanding of color of money. So when we think of color money, we are talking about the appropriation arm of, of Congress. Congress is breaking the different types of funding out into different colors so that they can identify what the purpose is for, how it's supposed to be used, what are the rules associated with that type of money. Um, and it's essentially their process for managing the spending of the different types of funds. So you're probably wondering where is color of money even talked about? Well, I'm glad you asked. Under USC 31, you have all kinds of wonderful laws and rules around uh, types of money. They consider what is the purpose of the money and how can it be used? Then they talk about the bona fide need rule. The bona fide need is about form and fit. Is, it, is the money being used as it was intended in the time period that it was intended? And then, of course, you have the Anti-Deficiency Act. That's a big one. You don't want to violate that one. That is orange jumpsuit, go right to jail, do not collect your $200. So um, we'll talk about all those when we get into the different challenges and such. But when you think about color of money, uh, you generally are talking about O&M, or Operation and Maintenance, RDT&E, Research and Development Dollars, research development test and evaluation to be more accurate, and procurement dollars. Now there are other types of funding. There is MILCON, uh, which is like military construction and BRAC for like uh, base realignment and closure type activities. Uh, and there's other functions and purposes for which there's money. But for the main purpose of this video, we're going to focus on O&M, RDT&E, and PDW. So what are they? O&M, operation and maintenance, that's going to be salaries. That's going to be small investments in software under 250K, or most importantly, and, and where a lot of the dollars go, operation and sustainment. So if you think of the big arc of uh, software deployment, especially, or, or deployment of anything in general, you think of what happens after operational deployment goes into maintenance and sustainment. Now that's kind of old school thinking. And when you talk about agile, we hope we're never in operation and sustainment, but the reality is a lot of programs are very much there and a lot of O&M dollars go towards paying to maintain legacy systems. So those are your O&M dollars. Next up, you have RDT&E, Research Development Test and Evaluation Dollars or your research dollars. They are two-year funds, O&M funds or one-year funds. RDT&E are two-year funds, meaning from the date of appropriation, you have two years to get the funding on contract, obligated. RDT&E is meant for research, development, pilots, prototypes, basically the innovation side of the government, trying to get the next generation of technology brought in to move to the operation and sustainment phase of the life cycle, at least in the classic thinking. And then finally, you have PDW dollars, and think of those as procurement dollars. Those are big ticket items. Those are longer lead time items. You have more time to execute those funds. Uh, you have three years for PDW. And those are big investments. So software buys over 250K um, or large ships and planes and things like that. So there you have it. Those are the different colors of money. Tonight, we focused on O&M, RDT&E, and PDW. On the next episode, we're going to talk about some of the challenges and programming requirements and some of the different laws that I mentioned before and how they apply to the execution of those dollars. So stick around, come back for that. But until next week... Cheers.